can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the same right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I have Ron Effetz of MyBytes.io. And Ron, before I formally introduce you, I always like to point out other episodes people should check out of the podcast. This this is part of my top Israel business leader series. Some of the other people I've had on, uh, Ron, who you may know, um, I had Ron uh, Geva, uh, founder of Webs.io. Um, he helps companies with brand protection and monitor the dark web and security for companies. I had uh, Amit Estrecher of Extras and Genie talks about how he lost all his clients overnight, not once, <laughs> but twice, and actually how he bounced back from that. Uh, Arit Oz has run an agency over 25 years in the B2B space and helps companies with their global expansion and consistent branding and how she did that and launched it across many, many uh, uh, locations and countries. So check those out. Um, and many more on inspiredinsider.com. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships. And how do we do that? We actually help you run your podcast. We're an easy button for a company to launch and run your podcast. We do the strategy, the full accountability, and the execution. And around we call ourselves the magic elves that work in the background to make it look easy for the host Don't. and for yeah. the company. So they can create great content, develop great relationships. The number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I found no better way over the past decade to profile the people and companies I most admire on this planet and share with the world what they're working on. So if you've thought about podcasting, you should. If you have questions, go to rise25.com. I am excited to introduce today's guest, Aran Effetz, the CEO and co-founder of Bytes. Um, you can find it at mybytes.io. And the company is dedicated to training and onboarding and upskilling frontline employees. Uh, I know, Aran, you describe it as if TikTok and corporate LMS had a baby. That's what we're looking at here. And Bytes is a solution for training, communication, engaging frontline workforce. And what it really is, it's a revolutionary content creation app that enables managers to easily create media and creates a seamless delivery to employees. And what's cool about it, Ron, in my opinion, is it does so on existing channels, such as WhatsApp, Slack, the SMS, Microsoft Teams, whatever that company uses, they can use. Because when I'm thinking of LMS, usually it makes you log into a separate place. And you know what I love about the philosophy of this is because you don't try and change user behavior, right? It's like wherever you live, this can live. My bytes can live. I know you have over 200,000 users around the world that consume and rely on bytes for their training communication. And, you know, really bytes makes companies successful by aligning the entire organization. Uh, past clients include companies like Unilever, HP, Amazon, and Microsoft, many more. And this is uh, around first. Uh, go around, not first rodeo. He co-founded eight restaurants and bars. Is a board member of fintech startup uh, Obaligo, uh, and led one of Tel Aviv's leading urban renewal companies through a merger with a public company. Right. So, and to top it off, he is a veteran uh, F-16 fighter pilot in his past. So, Ron, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. I want to start off. You know, I want to talk about my bites and what you do. But I, I wanted to, to just also have you share some lessons, some lessons you brought in to your entre entrepreneurship journey, your company as an F-16 fighter pilot. What are some of the lessons you learned there um, that brought you, you know, that you take with your entrepreneurship career? Yeah. So I think first and foremost is how important it is to be well-informed, uh, well uh, knowledgeable about the things that you're going to do. Uh, the the amount of information that you have and the amount of training that you have prior to doing something has a crucial part on everything you do. And it doesn't really matter if you're uh, flying an F-16 or if you're folding a T-shirt uh, or if you're upselling in the counter or serving a dish. Uh, the, the amount of training that you will get prior and how well the training was delivered to you will have a crucial effect on the outcome. 
And I think this is in a bite size uh, training what we're trying to do and um, and and bring to the to the frontline employees just as workforce. Yeah. So talk about bites for a second and the idea. How this idea uh, come about? Okay, so uh, first of all, you mentioned that the, the sentence as TikTok, TikTok and LMS had a baby. Uh, it was actually invented by one of our customers. Uh, we adopted it fondly because it accurately described, described what we were trying to do. And she described it even better than us. So ever since she said it, uh, we've been using it. Uh, and The best exactly- copy Ryan, comes from customers. The best exactly. copy. Exactly, exactly. Once we heard it and said, okay, this is it. <laughs> this is her new tagline. Um, and But this is exactly what we, we're trying to do. Um, we are three co-founders, uh, Tal, Hagai, and myself. Uh, Tal and Hagai are both learning and development experts. They've had over 15 years of experience each in instructing, teaching, uh, managing instructors, and delivering content, professional content to uh, students. Um, and they know the pain firsthand. I saw the pain first time when I owned bars and restaurants. I managed over a thousand or even more frontline employees. I could not get to them. I could not deliver the messages. I could not deliver the content and the training like I wanted to do. Uh, And pretty fast, I understood that the training methods in the Air Force are not the same for frontline employees. They will not sit behind the laptop because they don't get one and get hours and hours and hours of training. Uh, It needed to be adjusted to this generation, the Gen Z, the millennials, frontline employees working shifts, and uh, most of them is temp jobs. So I I felt the pain firsthand. And when I met Tarn Fagai together, uh, this idea, this concept of bites came to life. So how did you meet them? Actually, by... By accident, like uh, most, by coincidence, like <laughs> like most things, most good things in the world, uh, at least in my in my life, um, Tal's sister was a simulator instructor in the Air Force, uh, and she knew that Tal and Hagai have left their prior job, and they've actually the one who first thought of the idea and the concept of bytes. They thought about it more into education world, into schools, elementary schools, high schools. Uh, and she said that maybe it's worthwhile that they meet me uh, because we knew each other from the Air Force. Um, and when I saw this idea, I immediately understood how a good fit this is for the front-end workforce, desk workforce to my employees in general. Um, it took a while. It took a while because I had prior obligations. Uh, as you said, I was a founder of a real estate company. And we were just after an MA. So it took a while, but eventually I got to a place where I can leave my prior job and go full time working at Bytes. And ever since then, we've been one big happy family. What was so attractive about this that you would want to join? Because based on your past experience, you could not do anything, but you have a lot of options of what you could do. Why this? I, I think it, it's a combination of my two. Uh, biggest passions. Uh, first of all, is tech. I'm I'm a nerd. I'm a geek. Uh, I like tech. I like to explore everything. Uh, tomorrow we're launching a new uh, LND wizard or LND insight wizard from GPTs, and hopefully to be the first one who launches uh, this kind of things. Uh, we are very heavily reliant on AI, and we were there a lot before the this AI revolution. But obviously, this is enhanced. It. So first of all, it's one of my biggest passions is tech, always trying to be on the cutting edge of technology. The other thing is training and mostly upskilling frontline employees. When I managed over a thousand frontline employees, uh, I think if you'll go back and ask them, uh, they will say that most of the time I tried to understand them better, try to give them better better options and to to give them a platform where they can you know, evolve as as a human being, as a person, and go towards the next stages in life. And and bytes actually takes these two passion uh, passions of mine and and combines them into one, which is technology designed for frontline employees training, onboarding, and upskilling. And there's a lot of moving pieces with a SaaS company. 
I'm wondering what features did your customers demand that has shaped what the product is now? You know, I was talking to someone the other week and, um, you know, this is actually, they may be a good fit for, for Byte specifically, but they were worried about a platform they're using and then the privacy part. So they wanted to keep it private with just people in their company and not external people. So I'm wondering, maybe, you know, maybe talk to the privacy piece, but just features in general that you've built into Bytes because of customer demands. Yeah. So first of all, I think that uh, the, the, the thing that is most appealing to companies, how this thing has all the necessary features from a learning management system, from an LMS or corporate LMS, uh, we do everything in the background, like we integrate with HR systems, we integrate with communication channels, like like you mentioned, text messages, iMessages, WhatsApp, and others. Uh, we integrate with different dashboards, with different different learning management systems, but all of this happens in the background and seamlessly. What appeals most to our customers is, first of all, how simple it is to create a content, an effective and engaging content. They simply have to put up, put up their camera and say, hey, this is our special dish for this week. This is our limited time offer. This is our uh, uh, limited time offer for our uh, Black Friday that is coming uh, in a few days from now. So the simplicity of creating such an engaging and effective content, this is one uh, thing that appeals uh, to them. The second thing is, like you mentioned before, we do everything in our power for it to be seamless as frictionless to the company. The frontline employees do not need to install anything at all. They don't need to get used to any new platform. There is no onboarding time. And there is even in, they don't even need to log in uh, to the platform if you choose to do so. So from the point of view of the employee, this is as frictionless and seamless as possible. They get a push notification to the place they spend most of their time, they're most engaged to, and they're most attentive to. They click the link, they click the byte, and that's it, pretty much. And they see a short content. It's not a pain for them. It's not a hassle. And they learn from it. In terms of privacy, obviously, it differs dramatically between an organization uh, and uh, how deep the technology and how deep the propriety is. Uh, obviously, if a company is delivering a byte on how to fold a T-shirt, this is not something that is... It's too, it's too big of a pain if if someone else from a different company will see it. But it's very important for their frontline employees to know how to do so. Uh, but you can decide and you can choose all the login methods that you wish to imply, whether it's a, a simple link which is pre-logged in, and all the way to single sign-on, Okta, um, one login, uh, AWS, and obviously Microsoft and, and in Google, and even two-factor authentication. So you can decide the levels of privacy uh, for each content. It's not doesn't have to be for the entire organization because put in mind that when, when talking about most people in life, but uh, definitely when talking about frontline employees, the more barriers, the more friction you will do in the way, that will reduce engagement. Um, and if someone forgets their password, they will simply not see the content. That's it. They will not get back to this. So this is why we try to be as frictionless as possible. So a main piece has been really you focus a lot on integrations because that's what you've gotten demand from from the customer. Well, this this person uses WhatsApp and this person uses whatever. What What's another main feature that you had to include because of the feedback you were getting from your clients? And you have big organizations too. And I'm sure they're yeah. like, you know, well, I wish you'd have this, right? I'm sure you get requests all the time. So What's another feature that was that helped shape the product? So, okay, so uh, that's a great question. I, and I look at it a bit more than a feature. It's a, it's a pillar in our program, in our product, sorry. Uh, and that's the content creation app. Because we started with a fairly simple video editor. But then we understood that this is only like 10 to 15% of the work to take the video. Uh, when finishing videoing, t- taking the video or filming it, now you have to make it a professional piece of content, professional content unit. So this is all our AI efforts, or most of them are focused on this part, that once you finish taking the video, we do all the heavy lifting for you. We do noise canceling if you play, if you take the shot, the shot in, in busy places like hospitals and, and 
restaurants and, and um, uh, branches of retail. Uh, we add subtitles, we translate it to 150 languages. We add uh, the question, the summary cards, the quizzes, the, the cover image, the title. Uh, there is approximately 50 processes that are running in the background. So uh, later on, the content creator will not have to do anything at all. Once they finished filming the video, they can sit back, wait for 15 seconds to 20 seconds, and that's it. Everything is there, ready for them. How do you, thanks for sharing that. Um, how did you originally determine and think about pricing? Uh, trial and error, uh, trial and error. Uh, obviously, we started as a very lean solution. Uh, we started with only the basic features. Uh, so the pricing was a bit lower. Uh, but as we evolve, as we grow, uh, we add more and more features and we start launching a few pricing plans because uh, smaller organization SMBs, they don't need integration to their HR platforms. They don't need uh, uh, advanced analytics and dashboards. Uh, so, and they're willing to pay a little bit less. Uh, obviously, enterprises have a lot of demand, uh, both around security, privacy, support, customer success. So the pricing is a bit different. Um, and to be completely honest, I think we're not charging enough because we see the ROI that has our platform has from every organization we work with. And we always say uh, we should charge more. Uh, but that's that's an evolution. I think that, that in general, big organization enterprises, they're starting to understand that learning and development is is a is entire PL center. Uh, they're start looking at it as a, a PL or profit and loss uh, in the balance sheet, uh, they understand the immediate ROI they're getting from these platforms. But not everybody gets it from the first get-go. So it takes time and it's evolution. And if you ask me, the prices will be two times or three times, uh, three years from now. How do companies, when they're thinking as far as ROI, how are they thinking about this platform when they go, how are they getting ROI when you say ROI from using Bytes? Yeah, so uh, it really depends on the buyer. Uh, the I will say the biggest advantage and the biggest disadvantage of Bytes is that we fit uh, a lot of different use cases and a lot of different industries. Uh, so when talking to sales, it's very clear ROI. They have a limited time offer this week. They have a new collection. They have a new offer. They have uh, an instruction about the new dish or new cocktail. And it's very obvious if they send a byte, if they send a, a micro learning unit to their employees uh, about this new uh, product, they see it in, in in their top line, in their revenues. So it's extremely easy to explain the ROI. And we did even A-B testing with a lot of our customers. Let, let's say, okay, send to these 10 branches, send the byte, and to these 10 branches, don't send it, and see the difference on your own, and this is it, they're hooked. So this is when talking to sales, it's a lot easier to show the ROI. Um, the, the more difficult things is to show on operation sides and mostly on onboarding sides because the effect comes, it takes a few months for the effect to show. Um, if we'll take one of our customers, that one of our, uh, my personal favorite customer, H&M, um, they've been working with Bytes for quite a while. Uh, but after they saw the value, after they saw uh, how engaging this is, they've created an entire new employee onboarding plan. And they've managed to reduce their frontal training, uh, their instructor-led training, uh, from in, in 30%, by 30% decrease. So, so simply by digi digitizing sorry, the content, making it bite-sized, making it uh, very uh, engaging and very effective to their employees, they've managed to reduce the amount of um, training shifts that they need to do by 30%. So this is direct ROI. But what I like most, more as a data person, uh, is the NPS or the score that the employees gave it once they finished uh, uh, the course. And they rated it as 92 points uh, effective and, and helping their job later on. Um, so it was very, very impactful. So not only they finished the training faster, they were more productive in the end. And they felt they have the knowledge base and the, and the know-how, how to operate well and how to do their job better. When I was looking at um, Unilever, 
Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what you did uh, with Unilever? Yeah, definitely. Unilever, it's it's actually a very interesting use case as well. We started as also in sales department. One of their sales director approached us and said, hey, we're launching almost 15 or 20 new products every month. And we don't know how to deliver this content, how to train our uh, field employees, how to train our salespeople around the country and all around the world, essentially. Uh, and we're looking for a platform where, where it would be very easy for brand managers to create the content explaining about the new product, whether it's a snack or whether it's a shampoo, uh, and deliver it to all of our frontline employees. So this is how we started. Uh, now we've been expanded more than six times since there, since then, working with uh, six times more employees uh, with very, very different use cases. Um, but one of the use cases that is talked about here, it's, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, is about safety, um, that they had to deliver a very important safety announcement to all of their employees. Uh, and this is, and they didn't have a different platform. So they, obviously they used Bytes. Uh, and they saw an amazing, amazing, amazing engagement rates within 48 hours. All of their employees watched the content, uh, no matter where they are. And this is like the was the final stamp that okay, this works perfectly. So let's let's go ahead and uh, and expand even more. Yeah, I could see this. And if you're if you're listening to the audio, we are looking at the mybytes.io uh, website, so you can check that out. And uh, we're actually looking at the Unilever page and some of the the implementation. Uh, which is is very interesting. I'm curious, Run two, what's been a strange use case, right? You mentioned there's a lot of use cases. You could see when I look at the solutions part, you know, there's food and beverage, there's retail, there's construction, consumer, fitness, healthcare, manufacturing. Sometimes um, these things spread and it takes on a life of its own and you didn't realize, oh, wow, they're using it for this. What was one of those strange use cases that customers started using you for? Okay, so I have two stories about this. Uh, first of all, Unilever, if we're touching them, uh, it's not a strange use case, but I didn't think, I, I never thought that it would be used for this. Uh, before every season, before winter, se winter season, before uh, summer season, uh, they issue a bite about uh, uh, driving safely during the winter, driving safely during the summers. Uh, and they also distribute it to the families of their employees. And this is something we did not uh, think about before that, they wanted the families of their employees to be safe as well. So this was something like a use case. Obviously, a lot of things evolve around compliance, compliance and safety and health. Uh, but we did not think about the, about the distribution to the families of employees. The other thing, um, since our product can be started using uh, for free uh, for a very small organization, uh, I I'm, I'm, hope I'm pronouncing it right, but in Los Angeles, one of... One person used it as a mentor to ex-convicts, uh, to people uh, who got, um, you know, they, they finished their, their time to serve in jail. Uh, and he was helping them to, to well, br bring that, brought that back to society. Uh, and he was mentoring them through bytes. He would be sending them micro-learning units or micro-learning uh, bytes of information about certain things whether it's everyday skills um, or it still does, by the way, I'm talking it like in the past, but <laughs> it's still happening. Uh, and this is sort of a co small community of people uh, that he helps get back to um, to normal life, I would say. No, I appreciate you. Something you, that you no way I would that. have imagined that it bytes would be used for. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, I, I just going to show this for a second. Shout out to Tom Vazo, who's CEO of Homeboy Industries. And that's actually, well, to send this to them because they're the largest and most successful, one of the most successful gang intervention, rehabilitation and reentry programs across the globe. And that's what they do, actually. They have a, a program for this. Um, and he talks about how the organization works. So we'll have to send this to him over Definitely. at Homeboy <laughs> Industries. Um, I'm curious, how do you get, you know, when you say, um, it seems like a big feat. We're looking at Unilever releases across whatever, 1,400 employees within 48 hours. How does it work technically? And then let's say they roll it out to families. So that helps the families too. How do they actually get it to roll out to 1,400 staff? 
Like, do they just have a central database of those staff and then they have to opt in? How does it work as far as, you know, releasing it out to the staff? Yeah, so essentially we're integrating with the company's HR platforms. And usually in these HR platforms, such as the UKG and SAP, and in the restaurant business, uh, it's a seven shifts and others. Um, they have all the necessary data, whether it's uh, phone numbers, whether it's emails, whether it's last name, first name, and, and more of it, the attribution, like where to which department does the, the person uh, belongs to what role and what geography and others, uh, everything that we need to know. And then because we're syncing with it, you don't need to do anything in our platform. You simply choose by a checkbox who you want to send it to. Uh, and that's it. And they get a push notification to their preferred instant messaging channel. Uh, in terms of opting in, opting out, this is, again, it, it varies between geographies, uh, GDPR compliance in Europe. It's a bit different than the US. Uh, but in general, um, what they do is, is they opt in once, once we start working with the company. And since that this point, um, they simply get a push notification to their preferred instant messaging channel. That's it. Yeah, and it's so as really, simple as one click of a button. You don't need to do anything else. Yeah, so really, it's integrated on their side because they have all the information, maybe in an HR platform or some platform, and then they can push it out to everyone because they have the data there. Um, Again, in so it's just just to say that in smaller organization where they don't have a big HR platform, we have a full user management capabilities where you can uh, create users, block users, add from a CSV file or anything at all. But in enterprise, usually where the pain is bigger because you don't want to manage 20,000 people on people on two platforms. It's impossible. Uh, we, we do everything by integration. I'm curious, you know, as a company, what were some of the first and how did you get the, some of the first key customers, clients? Because right now you can go to a client and go, hey, we've worked with Amazon, Microsoft, you know, now you have a lot of you know, social proof behind you, but before when you first started, you didn't. What were some of those key or a key first customer and how you actually got them? Um, okay, so as I said earlier, uh, the best thing in my life happens by coincidence. Uh, so as I mentioned, the Talent Hagai started by its first and they were actually the one who first thought of the idea and the concept. It was a bit different, but the, the core of it was still the same idea. Uh, and they were very much focusing on education and schools. Uh, but then someone Haggai knows um, from his reserve duty, by the way, if speaking on Israel, uh, said, hey, I'm a consultant for a big retailer in Israel. And I think this could be a great fit for retailers. Uh, and this was exactly at the time that we've met. And I came with the idea of frontline employees from the, the hospitality world, not the retail world, not the retail industry. Uh, but then things, you know, started working together. So this is how we started in Israel. Uh, when we went outside the borders of Israel and we went globally, uh, we we knew the pain is very big, right? We knew people are looking for solutions. You can go and you can Google it. What's the search volume of how to train a new server in a restaurant, how to train a new customer, a new employee in retail stores or consumer goods or manufacturing, transportation, logistics, you name it. Uh, so there's a big pain around it. Um, so we started as a product-led growth company that people can go into our website, start for free and use it on their own. And this is how we started. And this is how we got a very nice volume of customers, usually a bit smaller, uh, but very, very nice volume of dozens every month. Uh, but as the product evolved and as we evolved, and as we saw that the bigger pain is in the global companies, global enterprises, uh, the marketing methods changed a little bit. We just got back from uh, uh, an event in Las Vegas, uh, UKG, uh, which we launched a partnership with them together. What is UKG? U UKG is an HR platform, sorry. Got it. Uh, one of, I think it's the biggest or the second biggest with market reach in the United States. Um, and they held a an event in Vegas for more than 5,000 attendees. And we've just a uh, few of us attended this event and it was amazing. And so, you know, uh, the marketing strategy evolved as, as the product evolved and as we evolved and felt more mature. And as we felt more and more enterprise ready, because uh, obviously enterprises is, 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 is the holy grail, but it's very demanding on the other side. So you have to be prepared. Talk about the importance of partnerships, 
right? I notice obviously you have a partnerships page um, and you just mentioned, you know, there's some key partners that you integrate with that you can both help each other too. Definitely. Definitely. And first of all, you, you finished with the most important thing that I would say. I think the, the benefit should be mutual. I know that it's uh, not everybody's in mind like this, like what do I get from it? But first of all, I think the partnership should be uh, mutual, mutually beneficial. So this is to start with. The second thing, is, as we said earlier, uh, we believe that the, our product should be as easy as possible to use, as seamless uh, and frictionless as possible to use. So we believe in integration. And so once you believe you you buy, you buy build this integration, uh, great things come out of this. And it's mutual beneficiary to both sides. Um, it's still not uh, our main go-to market channel. It's not, it's not our main legion, but it's definitely a very, very, very important enabler. Uh, if we want to work with an enterprise that's working with SAP or UKG or other or Azure Active Directory and other, this is an enabler. And you don't, if you don't have it, then you're out. <laughs> um, so this is the way we look at it. But I'm guessing that with time, it will become a more and more lead chain channel for us. You know, I know you have a, a long um, career in entrepreneurship and you know, we always hear the good things, um, but I'd love to hear about some of the failures uh, that you learned from. No, I never failed. <laughs> um, I think that over the years, I've definitely counted more failures than successes. I'm just lucky that the successes were big enough uh, to, to keep rolling. Um, and that's the most important part, I think, to keep rolling all the time and be on the wheel, stay on the wheel all the time. Um, definitely I've had many failures in my background. Um, I think the biggest one, um, is where I was arrogant for the first, I don't know if the first time, but I was definitely too arrogant. Uh, we own some very successful bars and restaurants in Tel Aviv. And is in each one that we've opened, it was bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we went into a project, uh, which was supposed to be our holy grail, or I don't know, our uh, our our northern star, or, or whatever you want to say it, um, and it failed miserably. Uh, it failed miserably. We lost a lot of money there. Uh, it was too big. It was too expensive. It was too fancy. It was too much of everything. Um, and I, I believe that this taught me, I think, the the most important uh, lesson in life. Is is to st to try and stay as modest as possible. Um, I don't know. Don't don't fly too close to the sun. Uh, what was it at that point? You just the successes just led to you feeling unstoppable, untouchable. What was it that you take from that? I think that with success, you develop an appetite, or at least I do. Uh, an appetite for more and more and more. Uh, I didn't know, we didn't know um, how to stop and say, uh, okay, we're having a great role. We're having a great run. Let's let's focus on this. Uh, we always looked at bigger and bigger players and saw what they're doing. And we said, wow, we did it in half the time or 25% of the time. Let's try to be as big as they are. And I think we ran too fast and uh too high and aim too high i i don't think it was like i don't know just the, the appetite grew i we wanted to be better we wanted to be bigger we wanted to do uh more things that people will talk about and i i don't regret it by the way there is a lot of pioneering things that we've done in the course of the last 15 years or so or 20 years almost um and most of them could not have been done if we were to overthink them. Um, if you would think about them too much, they, it will say we would rule them out, but they succeeded. But I don't know. I think I, I now I'm, I'm much more modest than I used to be. Uh, I'm sure about this. Um, what's another lesson you learned uh, from a past failure? So for me, and it's a personal lesson, I don't know if it fits everybody, I'm a person of partnerships, uh, not just in 
in B2B partnerships, I mean, uh, I was very, very lucky to have two partners of mine. Uh, one is uh, Roy Dorr, which is the CEO and co-founder of Obligo, as you mentioned. And the other is Ron Chen, which is founded together with me. We all, the three of us, co-founded together also the restaurants and the, 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 the real estate company. And now Ron manages the, runs the, the real estate company. I don't think I could have gone through what I've went through without these two people. And the same goes for today with Tal and Hagai that we do together bites. Um, I'm looking sometimes at sole founders, at single founders, and I simply can't understand how they're doing it. Um, for me, it's more about the road than the, the outcome. Uh, it, uh, obviously, I care a lot about the outcome, but um, I'm, I'm a partnership person. I need people on my side. I need to consult with people, I need to talk to people, and uh, to and to to celebrate together when we succeed, and to comfort each other when things are going south. I'd love to hear on some of your mentors and what you learned from them. Wow, well, um, I think first is my father. Uh, I don't know if I can say mentor because he's my father, uh, but I think that. I've learned from him many, many things. Actually, both my parents, but I will start my father. Uh, he learned me, he taught me, sorry, uh, what eventually, oh, I think, helped me go through the Flight Academy as well. Uh, is It's okay to fail, but it's not okay to fail twice the same way. You can fail twice, but not the same way. You, you failed once, do a correction, Do a, maybe you will fail again, but don't do the same mistake twice learn from it. I think this has made me a, a better pilot. It made me a better business person. It made me a better person, I think. I hope so. And my mother, uh, which is, uh, she has a PhD, but she also runs startups even today. Uh, and I saw What her. does she do? What, what uh, startups? She's the CEO and founder of uh, um, a company that is trying to develop, uh, uh, I don't know how to term in English, so please excuse me, uh, but like Beyond Meat to do it for tuna, uh, sure. to grow protein-based tuna. Um, like a plant-based version yeah, of Yeah, but I think tuna. it's protein-based, but I'm not yeah. that sure about this. Um, hmm. she, she taught me resilience, uh, definitely. I think this is something in general true for a lot of Israelis, but uh, she's extremely resilient, uh, no matter what happens on the way, no matter what obstacles she sees, uh, she went through all of them. So in my opinion, they're the two big, they're the two people who influenced most of my life, not just because, because being parents, uh, also because looking at them and, and seeing how they're doing at their um, entrepreneurship life. And the other two people, I think it's it's Ron and, and Roy. Uh, I, I I don't know if I can call them mentors because we're in the same age level. We went through everything together. Sure you can, uh, yeah. but they they definitely give me a different perspective. We are so different from one another. How so? Uh, um, how um, Roy is always optimistic. Always, nothing doesn't matter what happens. Is is optimistic? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Ron. Ron doesn't live today. He lives like 10 years from now. Uh, everything that he thinks about, everything that he focuses about, everything that he imagines and dreams is, is 10 from years from now. Or if it's a bad day, it's only five years from now. Um, and me, always the realistic part. Uh, boots on the ground, uh, talking to the Excel sheets, talking to numbers and stuff like this. So I think that the combination between the three of us was very significant. But also it's, it's some kind of, mentorship because i look at them and i see oh okay this is another way to look at things this is another perspective um and for me as i said earlier this partnership or this different perspective and this uh dynamic between three two three people uh for me personally it's it's very 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 uh, important in in my personal growth um and everyday life actually Two quick questions on that. One, what's the company called? Your mom's company with the uh, Beyond Meat. Oh, Wanda Tuna. Fish. Wanda Fish. Wanda, W A N D A, Fish. Um, oh. Yeah, and we all are holding our fingers crossed to the, so they succeed. Um, I don't know if you saw Suspiracy on Netflix. Uh, if you will see it, once you see it, 
uh, you you will hold your fingers crossed that they succeed because uh, the, this again I'm not an expert in this area in this field, uh, but what we're doing to the oceans is very bad. I would say it like this. And not only what we're doing to the oceans, it's also what we're eating and what's inside of them. So I think this is the future. Uh, I'm just hoping that it will be as tasty <laughs> as, as as the real thing. One the fish. Probably. Yeah. Um, the other question I was going to ask about, Roy, you mentioned the, the being extremely optimistic. I was wondering if there is a, uh, a past example story of where you know he provided a different perspective maybe you weren't so optimistic on something and he came with his optimistic lens wow definitely i i can i don't i don't i can't think of a single point or as to boil to one thing but i think it i don't know it was pretty much on on everyday basis definitely around the, the the closing the restaurant that we had in Saran, the one that did not succeed uh obviously it was tough for him as well right it's it's hard to 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 stay optimistic uh but he always gave me the perspective that we'll manage to to get out of it it's it's okay things will be things will sort out i'm not exactly sure how i'm not <laughs> i don't know all the steps to the, on the road to 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 be in the place that we want to be but eventually things will work out. And guess what? He was right. Uh, we lost money. We, we had to close the restaurant. That's true. But we as a company, we as a group, we as founders, we prevailed. And it did not stop us in any way from uh, our growth. In, if any, it made the opposite because it pushed us both, Roy and myself, towards tech. Uh, and Obligo is a very successful company today, fingers crossed. Uh, that it will stay like this. I'm sure it will stay like this. And also Bytes uh, is growing very, very, very rapidly and nicely. So, you know, maybe it's, it was a blessing in disguise. Uh, he could see it then. I couldn't. I know that I couldn't see it then. I was extremely focused on talking to all the suppliers, to all the employees, to, to all the banks, making sure everything is no, no um, anti-loose uh, ends or stuff like this. So it was very hard for me to see above the horizon, over the horizon, yeah. Rizron, I have one last question before I ask it. I just want to point people to check out mybytes.io um, to learn more. And I just would love for you to talk about um, EO a little bit um, as an organization and, and you know, just the importance of um, entrepreneurship groups and how that's affected you. Yeah, so EO... I was actually extremely skeptic about this. Uh, I have a good friend of mine that is wanted me to join EO for many years. Uh, he's one of the first people in Israel to join EO. Um, and, and by the way, for people who don't know, it's, an entrepreneur, it's an entrepreneurship organization. It's founders helping founders and, and being in a group. So, yeah, who was the yeah, person sorry. that was telling you? Uh, to join. The first third person is Neil Zavaro, yeah, also uh, who's just launches the new book. Um, uh, I'm not sure it's allowed to say it, but I will say it anyway. It's called Fuck the Slides, and yeah. I had the pleasure of reading it uh, prior, previous to, to it being launching, launched, and it's an amazing book. So I urge I urge you all to go and buy it on Amazon. Uh, and this is for much, so much for the, uh, the PR here. Um, I, I, I thought it's a cult. All right, I thought it's like I thought it's like a support group. Nothing, nobody talks about what's going inside the forum and stuff like this. Uh, but I've been there six years now, and I think it really helped me evolve as a person. Uh, yeah, this is him. Here's <laughs> here's near. I actually released the episode on, uh, you know, we talked about his book and branding, and so you can see here, fuck the slides and yeah, and, and near here, yeah. And it's a great book and a great person, uh, but don't tell him I said so. Won't so uh, I think. Uh, I think that EO provided me with a place to be completely honest with myself. It's less about, for me personally, it's less about um, what value do I gain from other people. But for me, it's a place to be completely honest and straightforward with myself. And the fact that we meet once a month, it allows me to do a retrospective about myself, about the things that I did last month. And if I see 
that I've been talking about something or complaining about something or even whining about something months after months after months, it really puts a spotlight and says, hey, enough is enough. You need to focus on this. Go take care of this. And it gave me the structure and it gave me the place uh, to deal with things that I used to push back. And I used to say, okay, this is important, but this is nothing urgent. And EO has put them in the spotlight and, uh, and explained to me, hey, maybe this is urgent after all. So this is it. This is the vibe I got. First of all, thank you. Thanks for sharing your journey, your stories. Have everyone check out mybytes.io and many more episodes of the podcast. And Ron, I want to be the first one. Thank you. Thanks, thank everyone. Thank you very much, Jeremy, for having me. What I've got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.